social media channels all have target audiences. And our target audience is people who are hungering and thirsting for the truth. We call that sincerity. And we define it as wanting to know the truth badly enough that we would change our own behavior to conform with it when we find it. In the description below is a link to a video that was voted our number one best video in the year 2020. It's just called Sincerity. Please check it out to get a better idea of what it is we are targeting on this channel. This sincerity that we're talking about can be found almost anywhere, and sometimes it is found in the most unlikely places. So there could be potentially millions of sincere people that we have not yet been able to reach. Look at the number of subscribers that we have at the moment. There must be a lot of sincere people out there, since more than 100,000 of them have subscribed to this one channel alone. But don't believe it. The numbers are deceiving. In fact, true sincerity is one of the rarest qualities in the world today. Oh, we all want to be right, or at least to have others think we are right. We want to win arguments, and we want others to think well of us. But most of those thousands of subscribers have actually fallen away already, stopped watching. They just never got around to unsubscribing. I'm trying to be honest with you, my viewers. What we have to say here is interesting, radical, different. There's no doubt about that. But it's not what most people are looking for. Most of you confused us with something else. And so I want to save you time in trying to decide whether this is a channel that you should subscribe to, or if you have already subscribed, to decide whether you should stay subscribed. Our desire to know the truth has taken us to the teachings of Jesus as found in the four Gospels. We are absolutely convinced that Jesus is the Word or voice of God to the inhabitants of this planet. He is the answer to life, the universe and everything. Now, our faith in Jesus has given a lot of people the idea that we are just another church. So, a lot of people who have had problems with churches they have previously attended think, oh, maybe this church will suit me better. I wonder what it takes to join. And so they subscribe. But the truth is that we bear almost no resemblance to any church you have ever known. We keep telling people to actually listen to what Jesus said. Then we tell them to observe what he and his first followers did that changed the world. And finally, we tell them to actually do it themselves. There is, for example, no record of the first Christians putting up even one building. In fact, they sold virtually all of the buildings that they already had. Except maybe a few that could be turned into shelters for whole churches full of people who live together and work together 24-7 making outreaches from those various bases in order to preach the gospel in all the world. Please watch this short video about three steps to revival, which shows how we could have a repeat of what happened in the first century of Christianity if we just started imitating what was done then. There is also a link to that video in the description below. Living together and working for God 24-7 is what New Testament Christianity was all about. And that is what we have found to be the answer to so many of the world's problems. We found it in the teachings of Jesus. So the number one thing we are not is that we are not just another church. Our message of salvation is not some kind of do-nothing faith that ignores the teachings of Jesus. It is something that happens between each individual and our Creator based on what we do and what we keep on doing with whatever truth God shows us. When we have done it, we have seen it turn our whole life upside down. There is another link in the description of this video which will take you to a video called The Way, The Truth and The Life. That video attempts to correct a misunderstanding about the salvation which Jesus has offered to the whole world. Please watch it to get a clearer picture of what it is that he and we are saying. Of course, when people hear that we are talking about action, 
about the kind of faith that actually obeys the one in whom we have faith, there are others who have shown a lot of interest in us and who have subscribed in droves as well. They are people who believe in teaching and trying to obey all the rules in the Old Testament. Rules which were written hundreds of years before Jesus arrived. All those rules and regulations are collectively referred to as the Torah. The people promoting those rules get into arguments over such things as what to eat and how to spell the name of Jesus, but they seem to get especially interested in which day of the week we go to church. Can you see it? Straight away they have missed the point. Remember, we are not a church that anyone goes to once a week. We are the church, living together seven days a week as we stop working for money and start working for God. So we are not just another church. But neither are we Jewish imitations. We did not get this faith which now motivates us by trying to follow the Torah. That was something which Moses gave to the children of Israel. We got our understanding of the truth from following the teachings of Jesus. The four Gospels, remember? In the opening chapter of his version of the Gospel, John the Apostle said, The law came through Moses, but grace and truth come through Jesus Christ. That sums up the difference. Now, there was nothing particularly bad about the law. It was the best thing they had at the time. But it was not perfect truth. Whereas Jesus is. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. So yes, let's be disciplined. But our discipline needs to come from the rules as expressed by the one who is the fulfillment of the Torah. And not by disciplines contained in the 600 plus rules of the old way. A couple of videos that could help you to understand our position on this are Moses versus Jesus and Abraham's descendant, both of which have links in the description below. So, getting back to sincerity and the teachings of Jesus, we believe in something Jesus called God's kingdom. Jesus said that this kingdom is invisible. It exists in the hearts of all those who seek the truth with their whole heart. Now, after reading the four Gospels, in a fifth book of the Bible, the Revelation, we see this kingdom of God portrayed as being in opposition to all the various empires of man around the world and throughout history. We ourselves have come to use the word system to distinguish all the governments of man in contrast to the government of God. God's government only comes through faith in Jesus and all that he taught. Now, as a result of our mistrust in human governments, there is another very large and growing body of people who have come to this channel thinking that they represent our target audience. These are people who have deep-seated fears and suspicions about all earthly governments. But, in the end, I have had to conclude that most of them are not our target audience either. They have a partial truth. Yes, the governments of the world do not have the answers that only God can give. It's a huge step forward when we stop trusting either the Donald Trumps of the world or the Joe Bidens. But, until our focus turns back on the teachings of Jesus, those who have rejected the system are going to be spending all of their time listening to social misfits, just because they are social misfits, rather than listening to Jesus. The one who, alone, has God's alternative. This group has found itself jumping from one extreme claim to another. Whether it's a claim that the world is flat, or a claim that Donald Trump is the promised Messiah. Whether it's a claim that the condensation trails behind airplanes are an attempt to poison all of us, or a claim that COVID-19 is a hoax. Their overreactions to the sins of the system have only created new, and far less reliable systems that are not built on anything that Jesus actually taught. We have, in the four Gospels and in the Revelation, all the information we need to take a stand against the really sinister things that are happening in the world today. 
but we will be useless to change anything if all our energies are going into supporting one conspiracy theory after another that has been based on anything else except the teachings of Jesus. And that is the third thing we are not. We are not conspiracy theorists as such. Yes, there is a conspiracy, but it's much bigger than what is being said in all these various squabbles. In the description below, there is yet another link to a video called The Biggest Conspiracy of All Time. What I'm trying to communicate is that we seem to have far too many names on our subscriber list that are there just because they acted impulsively in signing up. Some of you are there because you wanted to join just another church. Some of you are there because you wanted to pretend you are Jews. And some of you are there because you are scared half to death of one conspiracy after another. I'm sorry if it's something I said which misled you. But I do think I've been saying with great consistency that our primary message is that Jesus Christ has the answers to all of the world's problems. If we would just listen to him and act on what he has told his disciples to do. Yet over and over, people have missed that. They think we don't mean it. They think that listening to Jesus really means listening to another preacher, another church, another man-made doctrine. This video is just one more attempt to clear up that unfortunate misunderstanding. If you haven't yet met Jesus, but you are hungering to know the truth, then I would encourage you to open a Bible to the four Gospels and read them. Get acquainted with what it really means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, and then you will have a much better idea of who and what we really are here on this channel. In the meantime, you now know three things we are not. We are not just another church. We are not built on faith in the Torah, and we are not a short-sighted conspiracy theory. Oh, and if you would like to have a closer look at how we are living out our sincere faith in Jesus, please click on the video link that appears on the screen at the end of this video. It's the first half of a two-part documentary about our communities which are spreading around the world. If, after watching all the videos that I've recommended in this video, you still want to subscribe to this channel, and you still want to learn more about this whole new way of living that Jesus taught, I would love to hear from you by email so that I can introduce you to others who are living like this in your area of the world. Please write and share a little about your own spiritual journey. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you and God bless you.